Well, let's talk more, shall we, about the title race then after Arsenal's point at City on Sunday. Joe and Sam here with me. How do you view that point for City and for Arsenal? Arsenal the happier? Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, we were discussing it before the game and actually, you know, with Arsenal's goal differences we can see here, actually, you know, they're within one slip up, one Liverpool slip up of actually going back to the top of the table. I think, you know, that City being a point further behind, it is actually more of a disadvantage. But yeah, I think Arsenal can be really delighted with that point, especially given their record at the Etihad and the games they got left, you feel? Yeah, I think it was a really symbolic result and performance for Arsenal. Their record at the Etihad before them was terrible. I think they lost on their last nine visits. Michael Arteta, as a manager, had only ever experienced losing at the Etihad. So to go there to restrict City's attack in the way that they did, I think City had one shot on target. You could see Arteta's celebrations at the end. He was smiling, he was smiling, he was taking the applause from the away fans. So, I think it was a symbolic result for Arsenal. It'll give them confidence for this run-in. But there's no doubt he's frowning there, Jurgen Klopp, in that picture. But I would think the biggest smile would be on his face at the moment. Is that fair? Yeah, I think they were the big winners from the weekend, weren't they? They beat Brighton and then they see Arsenal and City take lumps out of each other, get a draw. They're sitting pretty two points clear at the top of the table. It was the manner of the performance against Brighton. I know they went behind, but they were clearly the better team, really peppering the goal, eventually got that win. They're just so hard to put away Liverpool. Even though they went behind, they came back to win again. They keep doing it. So yeah, their consistency is amazing. They've only lost one game since Christmas, Liverpool. So yeah, they're the big winners from the weekend. Okay, before we go any further, I want to show you this because we've been tracking this all season and this is the Opta Predictor. It's a supercomputer which we know never sleeps, but what it's doing is it's churning out these results and these predictions. For the first time this season, here we go, Liverpool, according to the Opta Title Predictor, are favourites of 47.7%. In fact, they've swapped places with Manchester City, have now gone down to 33.5%. And Arsenal, despite that draw at the Etihad, their win percentage, possible title win percentage, hasn't changed at all. It's still under 20% down there at 18.8%. You've seen all of that. What do you both think? Are you surprised by Arsenal and their lack of ground that they've gained on Opta's top two favourites and the fact that Liverpool and City have swapped? Yeah, I'm a huge fan of Opta, but I don't really believe in all this. I actually think all three have actually got as good a chance of winning the league as each other. Very, very surprised that Arsenal's percentage hasn't gone up, especially after a really, really good defensive display at the Etihad Stadium. They say that attacks wins you games, but defence wins you titles. So yeah, I think Arsenal should be a lot higher, but I think it's really all to play for. It's a three-way title race and the best one we've seen for a long time. Yeah, absolutely. I'd echo that. Surprised by Arsenal, not moving at all. I mean, they're not my favourites, but I certainly would have them at higher than 20%. But who am I to argue with Opta? I think it's interesting Liverpool are nearly 50% now. They only hold a two-point advantage, but there's only nine games to go and we've seen the level at the top of the Premier League in the last few years. A two-point lead with only nine games to go is actually quite a lot. So it kind of explains maybe why Liverpool are so high up, but that's a huge swing, isn't it really? City no longer favourite, surprising. Arsenal, not your favourite. That's just in the title race, not in general life. Just in the title race, of course, no bias. I had to clarify that one. Right now, so what we've got, we've got Opta, and what we're going to do now is our jam predictor, which is a mishmash of Joe and Nolan. So, we've got you both to predict what you think. So Nolan, we're going to start with you. We're going to look at your predictions for these final games and points dropped by all three teams, but in particular for you, for Liverpool. Yeah, I think it's all about sort of the periods that they have between now and the end of the season. The one that really stands out for me are these four games for Liverpool. Everton away, West Ham away, Tottenham at home and Villa away. All very, very tricky games on papers. And let's not forget, they'll have Europa League fixtures within that as well, or they might do. So, you know, the fixture congestion is very strong there for Liverpool. I think they are very good at sort of getting down and winning the last 10 games. But I do wonder, you know, after beating Everton at Goodison Park and potentially getting a win at West Ham, whether it just might tail off slightly. And I think with Arsenal, there's also a period as well where they have Tottenham away and Manchester United away. Obviously, Tottenham away is a very, very difficult game. You know, the Spurs fans will be very, very motivated to go and, you know, stop Arsenal from winning the title. And Arsenal have a terrible, terrible record at Old Trafford. They've lost there in the last two seasons under Michael Arteta. And for City, well, you know, the one that stands out is again another trip to Tottenham. They have a very poor Premier League record there. And then there's the other game I've sort of picked out where they could drop points as Brighton away. They obviously drew 1-1 away at the MX last season. They had already won the Premier League at that point. But just the way Roberto De Zerbi sets up his side, they gave Liverpool a really, really tough game at the weekend. I think they could do the same to City. And of course, City aren't as strong as they were last year. 
So I think it's very much all to play for. But I think the big sort of overarching point is that these teams may not lose. They can very much sort of, you know, have this tunnel vision. All three of them between now and the end of the season. Yeah, significant draws costing Liverpool because I'm looking 21, 23, 23. We will see what that does in a moment. Joe, how about you? You said Arsenal weren't your favourite. So how's that reflected in here? And you have a defeat for Liverpool as well. I know, I know. At first when I did this, I kind of had nine wins apiece. And I thought, well, that's not going to happen. I've got to put some draws and defeats in there somewhere. I kind of do think Aston Villa away is possibly Liverpool's toughest game in that run-in. Aston Villa, we don't know what they might be playing for league-wise towards the end of the season, but just a trip to Villa Park for any team is a really tough game. For Arsenal, yeah, I've got some, you know, I've got quite a few draws in there, similar to Sam as well, Tottenham away, United away, particularly in the last few games of the season. I think that's a really tough run-in. And then City, I think they've got the easiest run-in. Tottenham away is certainly their hardest game. As Sam said, they've got a really bad record at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in the league, but they did win there in the cup this season, which I think could be quite big for them. They also, they know exactly how to manage the end of seasons. They can just go on these big winning runs. I know they're not quite at the level, they're not, they've got quite a lot of injuries, but as we can see here, City's still just about my favorite. So we've not got the column here, but I've got them winning on goal difference. Okay, which game gives them a significant boost? Because we know their goal difference needs to improve if they're to do that. Yeah, well that Tottenham game there hasn't actually been assigned yet. So their last game of the season currently is at home to West Ham. And for some reason I could see them getting a big win against West Ham. Perhaps West Ham are preparing for Europa League final resting players, who knows. But I did a little predictor this morning. I had City winning that game 4-0, and then it turns out that City win the lead by one goal. So that's how I see it going. Wow, so that's tight. Yeah, I've gone with the goal difference route as well. And it is so important between now and May the 19th. It's not just if you win, it's how you win. And these sort of midweek fixtures that are coming up tomorrow, Arsenal host Luton, Liverpool host Sheffield United. It actually could be a very much of a shooting match between the two. But yeah, I think, you know, Arsenal are very much in with a shout, especially with the games they've got left. Yes, they've got Spurs and Manchester United. But if it's the current Spurs and the current Manchester United we're seeing, I think Arsenal can absolutely show the ambition to go and get a result from those two games. What I've gleaned from this, it's going to be tight. Yeah, and it's going to be exciting, but a bit of fun and interesting to see how that turns out. I think they are very good at sort of getting down and winning the last 10 games. But I do wonder, you know, after beating Everton at Goodison Park and potentially getting a win at West Ham, whether it just might tail off slightly. And I think with Arsenal, there's also a period as well where they have Tottenham away and Manchester United away. Obviously, Tottenham away is a very, very difficult game. You know, the Spurs fans will be very, very motivated to go and, you know, stop Arsenal from winning the title. And Arsenal have a terrible, terrible record at Old Trafford. They've lost there in the last two seasons under Michael Arteta. And for City, well, you know, the one that stands out is again another trip to Tottenham. They have a very poor Premier League record there. And then there's the other game I've sort of picked out where they could drop points as Brighton away. They obviously drew 1-1 away at the MX last season. It actually could be a very much of a shooting match between the two. But yeah, I think, you know, Arsenal are very much in with a shout, especially with the games they've got left. Yes, they've got Spurs and Manchester United. But if it's the current Spurs and the current Manchester United we're seeing, I think Arsenal can absolutely show the ambition to go and get a result from those two games. What I've gleaned from this, it's going to be tight. Yeah, and it's going to be exciting, but a bit of fun and interesting to see how that turns out.